So with this pose, there's a couple of composition issues and a couple of pose issues. So the pose is extremely awkward. Um, if you've ever seen someone do um, like a half squat, it's more of a half squat than a um, suspension or like a Superman suspension, which is why I sort of uh, pulled out some Superman pictures for you uh, to show you how they have made him seem like he has that same demeanor and the same elegance, but also a great level of solidity to the, to the suspension. So it's not a suspension like you just went out into outer space and you've never experienced zero gravity before and it's really awkward. That's what yours looks like. Um, the way Superman is usually depicted, or any superheroes that can float, they're usually depicted with a serious level of control. And um, though the feet don't sit on any flat surface, the suspension is still executed in a way that looks controlled. So his position looks more like a like um, like a squat attempted in zero gravity um, than a um, the back is straight, which is good. That's what it seems like to me. Seems like there's more of a squat. <clears throat> Um, if he was supposed to be just, you know, thrown back and he's ready to pounce back into the battle, um, it still seems like there isn't enough indication for me as the viewer that he has just been, um, you know, he just received a blow. So there's a lot of different, confu a lot of confusion here. Maybe uh, sometimes when we pick up more than one reference, we take from each reference and we expect it to work for some reason. Um, uh, so... Uh, <clears throat> so um, doesn't really fit, doesn't really match each other later on when you combine them into one painting. So you have to make sure when it comes to a pose, this is number one of figure drawing, boys and girls. When it comes to a pose and figure drawing, you have to stick to your reference as much as possible. There is a reason for that. Uh, there's muscle groups that are involved in that particular pose. You can't just bring in another pose and combine it together, hoping that it works. You have to make sure to see that you know the straightness of the back matches the position of the legs or the arms or any specific um, pose we're talking about here. Um, make sure that when you are combining two references together, you make sh you, you think about how both references can complement each other with, when it comes to the muscular uh, the muscles and how they work together to produce that pose. Um, sometimes, you know, his back straight, um, his shoulders back, but his legs are squatted. He seems like he's ready to do some sort of martial arts position rather than float in suspension. Um, with, and, and then deliver a sense of power, because that's what you want to explain, that's what you want to um, uh, iterate, you want to, you want to paint a picture of someone who is expressing power, you want to express power in your image, um, and when I look at Superman's pose, <clears throat> any of these poses, there is a serious level of power involved, because there's either one leg straight or both legs straight, and the straightness of the leg represents the stability. So if you've ever seen someone standing or if you've ever seen mountain pose, um, the straight leg, the straight back, it's a very stable position and that's what you want to give off. If the legs are squatted, there's a level, of, there's a lack of control that's being um, uh, displayed. So that's what you want to avoid as much as possible. You want to show that there's power. And sticking to one reference is really good, a reference that is, um, you know, someone standing up. Another perfect example of this is um, Goku Super Saiyan. <clears throat> yeah, sue me. <laughs> um, like this, this pose right here. Or, or this pose. Do you see that one straight leg, how it's constantly um, brought back? Now, when it comes to this position, this position right here, this is a this is a very specific pose. He is exerting energy. He is losing stability. He is going crazy. So he's kind of taking a dump, <laughs> an energy superpower dump of energy right now. And what he's doing is um, he's yelling, he's screaming, he's clenching his his <laughs> his muscles and his fists. And this is not what you are trying to display here. So this. Uh, performance, this exercise that he is in right now is is not really what you're displaying to me at this point. Um, I want to see more of the power pose instead of the uh, just had a blow, you know, or someone just punched him and he went flying back kind of blow, um, kind of position. So either straighten one leg or change the position completely. Um, I'm going to apply some of those changes right now for you. So actually the first thing I'm going to do is jump into liquify. Actually the first thing that I did was increase the size of the canvas because it was too short near the top. <clears throat> Why 
why is it doing that? Gee. Oh, come on. Why? Why? Um, it's okay. This is fixable. <clears throat> Alright, so I'm going to jump into liquify. Another issue I have with this painting is the expression um, and the face, the general portraiture behind it. Um, you have a very, very young kind of face happening, and it's also very, very feminine. And another thing that we notice in the Superman face um, is the jawline. <laughs> Just look at that jawline. It's, it's there every single time. It looks like Elvis Presley. Or the chin from Jimmy Neutron. You know the chin guy? I think that's what they were going for. They were trying to mock sort of how every superhero has like this amazing chin, amazing jawline. <clears throat> so that's sort of another thing that you have to work from. It's it's it, when it's not like that that we see it as weird because we're so used to the custom customary superhero look. And when you're thinking about someone whose bone structure has completely developed, who's some someone who's extremely powerful, who has the perfect amount of testosterone in their system, you, you you'll know that their bone structure will develop to be very similar to that. And some of these signifiers are of course the heavy cheekbone, the jawline. And be careful and stay away from cuteness triangles. So, meaning that the eyes have to be smaller. And the lips have to be a little less plumpy. And a little bit more masculine. The nose has to be a tad bigger. A tad wider. What all of this will do is further the masculinity. It will express the masculinity more. Because you've got all this muscle structure. You've got all the power that you want to explain. It's not like the... It's not like masculinity is synonymous with power. It's just, you know, that the superhero, the extremely powerful superhero that can turn back time by turning the earth, uh, making it spin backwards. <clears throat> That's what I'm, sort of what I'm talking about. So some of the other signifiers is the very, very heavy uh, brow bone. Like the jaw bone, it sticks out just a little. So the brow bone is a little bit heavier, Neanderthal-like. And how you express that um, so let's do a before and after, just for the um, face. So before, after. If you can see the difference, <clears throat> does everybody see the difference? It's the same character, really, but now the bone structure of the face matches this, the muscular structure of the rest of the body. So it seems like his whole body went through puberty except for his head. So we want to push down his jaw, express the size of his jaw, shrink the size of his eyes, because we don't want to express any level of cuteness. This guy is supposed to be strong, extremely masculine, on the other side of the spectrum. <clears throat> Though he is cute and he is very handsome, it's not, it's a, it's not really a, lock, a loss of beauty, it's more a loss of femininity. Because you want to paint a character that has a very specific gender. If you're going to settle for painting androgynous characters for the rest of your life, I mean, go right ahead. But that won't get you jobs. <clears throat> so if you want to stay from the androgynous, learn the spectrum, learn what's really cute and what causes it, and learn what's really handsome and what causes it. Learn what's really ugly and what causes it, like the ogre versus the cute fairy that I always give, those examples. Um, and that will really help you. Alright, so back to the pose. Um, what I recommend, I can't really uh, redo the whole painting for you, but what I recommend for the arms is, um, the arms seem to be, what you can do is have the arms, have the other arm face this way. So we've got that kind of um, setup instead of this kind of setup, which is what you had before, which seems a bit awkward. It's like he's facing everything on one side instead of having a really, really stable like mountain pose or tiger pose. I'm not really sure what it's called in martial arts, but it's a very specific pose where you're symmetrical on all sides and very stable. Or rock pose, is that what it's called? Where someone can't push you over because you're just too stable. Um, you can make for the legs, you can make one leg straight and the other bent, but they're too spread apart. Like I said, the squat feel is too awkward. Especially if you're suspended, doing a squat in suspension is like you're not floating in water, so you don't need to float in water. In water, you do a squat so that you can stay floating, so that you can shrink the lower, that you get yourself closer to your center of mass or something. Um, but for floating and suspension, since we don't really know how to do it in theory, it's just keeping your legs straight, I'm sure, would make you more stable especially if you're a superhero. Um, so what I recommend is shrinking the size 
We're shrinking the different the distance in between the legs. So give me a second to lasso this out. <clears throat> shrinking the distance between both legs and bringing both legs together. I mean, and, and, and making one leg bend out. Sorry. I'm all drugged up right now. Day quill. Without day quill, I don't know where I'd be. <coughs> Excuse me. If I die, remember me. <laughs> don't you ever, do people ever guilt trip your family? <laughs> By talking about your death? And they were like, oh my god, why do you have to talk about that? <laughs> and then they can get you, like, something from the store. I used to do that as a kid. Mom, I'm gonna die. Okay, so I'm just, um, trying to fi fix this up. <coughs> the power of the stream compels you to stay alive. <laughs> phoenix down. Where's the phoenix down? What? We just bring you back to life. <laughs> You'll summon the dragon and wish me back to life. <clears throat> Find all the all the dragon balls. Okay. So let me turn off these red marks. So this leg is a lot less awkward now. I'm just going to bring it a little bit closer. And you see this um, very consistent triangle that's happening. This beautiful, beautiful triangle. The Superman is really hot. <clears throat> um, this beautiful triangle right here. Very, very nice, to, uh, easy on the eyes. And then you break the triangle and it just gets that sort of clean look. Maybe, I don't know, it's a ode to Jesus or something. I'm not really sure. But um, it works. It works very, very well because you have one consistent shape. So if you have, if you ever ha are confused in the way you're organizing your composition, organize your composition around solid shapes. Um, if you don't know how to uh, divide the, the subjects in your image, think about the larger shapes versus the smaller shapes. How can the larger shapes gravitate towards the smaller shapes? So these smaller shapes are gravitating. Yeah, it's attached to him, but they have their own little suspension. But they are still complementing the you know the vertical versus the horizontal. So they're still complementing the the original large shape, which is the uh, standing triangle for Superman. Um, so this is also something that you didn't have before. You had a bit of a, you know, everything was going in, in multiple directions. So you had that one leg, you had the small head. So what I want you to do is avoid, avoid doing that for the rest of your paintings. Get one solid pose, stick to it. Don't combine it with other poses if you have combined this. And make sure the pose is, of course, a pose that matches your character. There's always that. You have to make sure the pose is complementing what your character is all about, what you're trying to depict, etc. So let me lasso this. Okay, so I'm just going to bring this leg, oopsie. I'm going to bring this leg a little closer as well. And make it do a little, a little float like that. So do you see how much better this reads? Because now it's a solid suspension. There is a, there are a couple of issues with the arms as well. I'll just cover those in a second. down, march down. And now I'm going to just jump into, I can't read through the arm for you, but I'm going to jump into liquefy. Actually, I can do this one. This one needs to be just a little closer to the body.
So the pose again seems more stable. What did I do? Why you do this? Just give me a second, guys. Um, yeah, I'm gonna have to lasso the arm out. Okay. Bring it in just like that. And the arm is a bit long. I'm going to shrink it. Tuck it in there. All right. You might want to look up a reference for the fist. Make sure the fist doesn't seem awkward. So do you see what I mean now But by the other arm? How the other arm just does a little... It's like a... Like that, more like a Barbie doll, the way a Barbie doll's arms are stiff. You want to have it be a symmetrical thing, or maybe the other arm is this way, or maybe he's holding some sort of fireball or something. Um, I think that's the only way to really fix it for the sake of the critique. It's just to make him do something. Yeah, the arm is too awkward. Um, something like that. Or just completely tuck the arm away behind. <clears throat> okay. It's just like this. Ah, oh, damn it, Mr. Brack. Seriously. Sorry, I forgot to <laughs> remove the red. Yeah, I'm just going to do that instead. Okay, and then finally I'm going to shrink the head down. The head is too big. It looks more like the body of like a 14-year-old boy than a, than a full-grown superhero dude. So increase the, st the density of the brush and it will shrink in uniform. Stick out the chest just a little bit, tuck in the belly. See now that before the arm was a little bit big because the arm was big to make the, the body seem big so you were overcompensating trying to fix the size of the head not knowing the size of the head was the issue you were making the arm shoulder too big to compensate. Um, the issue was in the size of the head, so the arms now seem fine because shrinking the arm allowed us to see the fact that the head was too big because the overcompensation or the crutch was removed, therefore the issue was revealed. So did everybody get what I just said? Or is everybody just talking about movies? <laughs> I see Jesus in this painting. One second, please. So who drew this painting? Who uh, among us is the one who drew the painting? Is it Sunjinjo? Okay. So before, do you see the size of the head? It was a bit big, and now it's a bit smaller. And then, of course, the composition uh, being another issue. I'm just going to... Oh, son, you're new. The person who drew the painting was fixing around the mistake. Yes, they were. Um, that is something that happens uh, a lot. I'm just going to tuck this in just like that. He's fitting into his canvas. Just going to fix up the earth behind him. And then we're going to talk about a little bit about grayscale. It's going to relax his shoulders just a touch. 
Um, the values here are extremely uh, over con con contrasted. Contrast is something that we settle for. It's not something that we use because it's useful to us. Overly co over contrasting your images will result in false form, the false image of form or the silhouette of the form. Um, that's not always good and it's really important to try to build the form with variations of gray than black and white. You will not be able to bring bl build with black or white because black and white are wash out colors. They're not uh, they, 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 you cannot build up with them. You cannot build them up. You cannot take them to a high point. They are the high point. They are the low point. High, uh, white is the high point of any thing ex um, exposed to light, and black is the low point of anything that is in lack of light. So how can you build form with something that is already really bright, and how can you build form with something that's already super dark? Um, so... Uh, so please remember, uh, you cannot use black and white to express form. Um, if in this case you're fine because you didn't use it to express form, you used it to make his little um, his little chest plate shine through. But you used a little bit of that because it was near the head. You used a little bit of it to express the head. That's not a that's not a good thing. So I'm just gonna throw some shadow over the head. And I'm going to bring in the highlights only where we need them. And that is going to be, he still has a bit of that baby face, so I'm just going to start chiseling the structure of the head. Give him that harsh edge right there. Shrink the size of the eyes even more. Bring down the contrast. Bring in some detail. And then bring that light only at the high points, which is the nose, the brow bones here and here, cheekbones. And the lips. Tuck some of his face back into the shadow of his hood. Ease up on that shadow under his under his chin. That is way too dark. Soften it up. <clears throat> and then expand it. Alright. So I'm just gonna sharpen. That reads a little bit better for me than um, what we had before. I, I don't recommend washing out his eyes in a white, but that, if that's the character, then you have to do that. Um, as for the body, as for the way you've shaded, uh, choose where your light source is coming from and shade around that. Um, the hood, the sides of his arms here and here. Oh, whoops. Here and here. Um, the chest area. All of that would be in shadow if the light was coming from above, like if he was nearby the sun, something like that. Do you guys see? He became part of his environment instantly. Because we're thinking about the, the, the core shapes, we're thinking about the cube cube is sort of guiding us around deciding where we place the shadows and the highlights. It's fixing up the face. And then the lower part, of course, that would be dark as well. And then you have to close off the canvas. You cannot have light hit the lower part of the canvas if he is the main character, the, 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 the point of it all. Um, if he's got any shines on his boot or anything, you can do that. You can break that a little bit, but there's a limit to it. You can't overdo it. Okay, so... 
again, look at these now. They, they sort of have the same feeling. Stability, strength, power, all of that. Solid shapes. So there's one solid shape. It's more like a rectangle now instead of a triangle. His, his, he seems to be a bit contorted, like his feet are facing this way and his body's facing like almost towards us. Yeah, this, this is super hot. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> um, so I got rid of the other arm because it was a bit awkward as well. So now I'm just going to show you the before and after. Flatten image. <clears throat> before. Okay. After. Before. Too much contrast, awkward pose, not a long canvas to complement a standing character. If you have a standing character, you have to have a long canvas for them. Arms seemed a bit awkward. Doesn't really seem like he has power, more like he has uh, some power. <laughs> like he's still a student. Like that's, that's what it feels like to me. It doesn't seem like he's like the master of who he is or deserving his title. And now that you have this um, less contrasty uh, image, there you have, you're using less contrast. Now you can really use the highlight where you really need them. So think about where the shiniest parts are in his little uh, chest piece. Those are the areas that should have the only highlight on them. So I just made the highlight go at an angle and then the top of his hood and when you have like little bits of highlights, you can make some of the highlight like um, bleed out of the form. So it would distort the sides of his little his little thingy. And if his um, if his uh, body armor is shiny, you have a chance to mess around with that. <clears throat> Again, please look up a reference, you know, on a hood, see how the shadows fall, how cast shadows drape um, with the hood. If his eyes have to be shiny, because I don't want to take away too much from your character. You can do it now a bit as a, add a bit more stability with grayscales. So you're not having like this crazy um, wildfire of contrast happening. You have more control over what's shiny and what's not shiny. Before. After. Okay? Anyone have any questions? <laughs> I guess we know it's this type now. <laughs> Esther needs a moment alone with the Man of Steel. Every girl needs a moment alone with the Man of Steel, okay? <laughs> it's not specific to me. <laughs> I need a moment alone. <laughs> yeah, everything is clear. Um, anyone have any questions at all about why I chose or did certain things? <clears throat> By the way, there's some new people here. Um, Gulheim, welcome. I'm not sure I welcomed you. Jinri, uh, Marvi, welcome. Nina, 211. Omi, Ramul, uh, Y, and Terrence Fletcher, and Yo. Welcome, guys. It didn't quantify. I'm ignoring you. Glynis, yes, is to the edge of the earth. Uh, what about it? Oh, right, under his crotch. I'm sorry, I don't mean to ignore you. <clears throat> How does she keep track of the new guys, dude? <laughs> well, I remember back to who I welcomed and who I didn't. Um, you can look up a good reference for how the edge of the earth has a bit of a glow around it, has a bit of a halo, an atmospheric halo, just on the edges, just like that, which might give a little bit of a of a yell up toward the, um, the contrast up there, so close off the canvas a little bit. Um, you can do that, but uh, I'm not sure if that's what you mean, Gulheim or Glynis. Glynis. 
yeah, beautiful images available on Google. <clears throat> All right, so there's that. Um, spent 30 minutes on that. I <laughs> hope you guys got a little bit. Um, these are images that uh, someone wanted me to review. So this is exactly what I want you guys to do if you want me to review your sketchbook. You send me a bunch of stuff. Don't just send me one thing and expect me to lecture you on, 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 on figure drawing proficiency. Um, make sure you're sending me a bunch of stuff and uh, and out of that I'll be able to, to give you accurate um, sort of diagnoses or whatever. Um, your use of shapes and gesture lines is spot on. It's amazing. Um, just take a look at this sketch right here. It's beautiful. Look at the flow on that. Nice. Very, very nice. I just don't even know how. Yeah, just like that. Yummy. Um, finish this, dude. Um, beautiful preservation of the, of the uh, symmetry line right here, if you guys can see it. That's another thing that I lecture my students on is the symmetry line and how the symmetry line can be used as a gesture line or how it can, finding the spine and finding the symmetry line and finding the gesture line all are one inter interconnected system. Um, beautiful job preserving the symmetry. You have an amazing eye for form, amazing eye for structure and for anatomy. Uh, you just have to keep going. Amazing work here with the cube. I don't know, I'm not even sure if you need me to lecture you. <laughs> this is the stuff that I teach. The, um, the, the gesture line comes first and then the shapes that are three-dimensional that you've done here amazingly beautifully amazingly beautifully okay it works and um, and in doing that you in invest a level of form so when you stack the pieces together put anatomy together put in the arms you know where to in in include them you know that the arm will be on this side so any shadows that this side is subject to the arm is also included in um, uh, the head, the head. I'll, all I recommend is finding a new way to create the head. What I usually teach my students is drawing the, the circle of the head, and then continuing it by finishing the chin. Circle, chin, circle, chin. It's amazing for, you know, making sure that your character faces the right direction. So you're drawing a character that looks like they're they're actually facing up when they're looking up, or facing down, or something like that. Okay, so uh, another thing in your uh, sketches that you can include that will help you um, make it seem uh, or determine exactly which direction, because that sometimes might be a problem, which direction your character might face in, is having a little arrow come out just like this in your, um, in your sketch. An arrow with some level of perspective, in, perspective included in it to help show you, the artist, after before you start rendering, after you're done sketching, where the direction is facing exactly. Um, other than the head, that's, that's really the only issue. Other than the head, there are no issues that I see before me. They're just really, really accurate sketches, clean work. Um, I could say keep going with the line economy. Keep thinking about how you're using your lines. I see some stray lines that are used for no reason. Um, these will fuck you up later, like this line right here. Uh, they'll, they'll give you some trouble later when you're rendering, like, why the heck did I include this? Act like every single stroke that you give costs you a million dollars. You know, that's, 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 that's not realistic. Costs you a hundred dollars, okay? Act like every stroke of the painting, every stroke on your painting, every stroke of, on your canvas, whether you're painting or sketching, costs you a lot of money. Um, and uh, if, if that, if it costs you this much money, um, you're going to use it less. You're going to be very uh, sparing. Is that the word? Is that the term? Using it sparingly. Um, and that way you're using the lines only where you need them to express the most essential edges of the form. Remember, please remember this. Everyone stop talking and remember this very, very important thing. Lines are a silhouette of the form. They are not the thing itself. This is a symbol. Symbol. Not an actual square. This is also a symbol. This is not an actual cube. Lines are not true form, all right? They don't expect, uh, um, they don't, what's the fucking word? <laughs> I just totally lost it. They don't re represent, they don't represent true form. What they represent is the silhouette of the form's edges. Write that down or write it back to me. I want to know that you guys remember this. Um, another thing is, um, when you do render something and you have the edges and you do form studies like I've shown some of you, uh, please make sure that you're thinking about how the, three, the third dimension is not there even then. Even when you render really, really well, the third dimension isn't even here. The third dimension is, is non-existent. It, it is 
an artificial third dimension. It is the x and the y, and the z is an artificial projected on 2D surface. We don't, we're not 3D modelers, we're 2D artists, but we act like we're 3D modelers by including the third dimension in our rendering. Okay, so when you draw, make sure that your line economy represents that level of strictness and that thinking, that thinking style. Think about how your form structures are just silhouettes and how your lines, make sure that you use them in a way that represents the form. Every line you ever draw for the rest of your life has to have a purpose. It can't just float around in your image. It has to represent some degree of form. It has to have a role in the form of the image. It has to have um, uh, some anatomical purpose for the body. It has to have an edge. It, it has to represent something. It can't just float around. All right. So that's all I can really say for you. Uh, for this one, it doesn't seem like you use the reference. Uh, for breasts, you might want to look up a reference as well. Careful not to make bubble muscles. Again, use the gesture line first and then follow up with the shapes. Make sure your muscles are not circles. I mean, you're using squares everywhere else. Muscles also have a level of cubicness to them. That might help you draw them a little bit better. So I'm seeing lots of bubbles. Avoid the bubbles. Avoid bubbles. <clears throat> and, um, and what was that? What was I going to say? Avoid bubbles, yeah. So yours, so, for, so if I were to diagnose where you are right now in your sketches, avoid bubbles, keep going with the form, e excellent work with your gesture lines, never opt out the gesture lines, keep going where you're going, especially this image right here, it's just beautiful, and, um, and uh, try, to, try to not draw the bubble head. So the bubble head is part of the bubble problem you have. Um, try to think about the actual 3D structure of the head. So don't just draw the triangle. Um, actually, just think about where the side of the head would be. Just like that. Sticking out from the side. Or if you see it from the front, you see the sides like this. Just like that. Okay? My line economy is crap. <clears throat> Right, so that's all I really have to say about this one, this artist. Now for this piece, you were having trouble with the hair. I wasn't going to repaint it for you because I'm not sure I have time, but I got in some references for you to show you um, what your hair looks like currently. It looks very oily and stringy. So I got a reference of someone who actually has oily, stringy hair on purpose. Um, some sort of fashion statement, I don't know. And... Uh, as you can see, it has a very similar texture where we have large pieces of highlights traveling in a in uniform shape. So we've got pretty much consistent width in all of the large pieces. And that's how hair crumples up together. It tries to crumple up, or the, the, the hairstylist or whatever, um, not crumple up, uh, jumbles up, um, collects together, I don't know. Um, it just gets together in a way where it starts to represent a string um, and all the tiny little hairs come together and it sort of looks ribbony. Um, instead of being individual hairs like we see with dry hair, they become one large thick hair um, or one large thick strand or one large thick ribbon. Uh, and that's what I see here. That's what you're doing here. The, th the consistency is so consistent. And, the, and um, <laughs> the structure of the lines is almost exactly the same in width. And that's the number one <laughs> rule with hair. When you want to paint hair, boys and girls, you want to paint hair that looks pretty, you have to make sure you work from large to small. Okay? So larger strokes come first, then the smaller strokes, of course, vary the sizes, and then you get the highlights. The highlights also come in large sizes, and then shrinking the highlights, and that's how we get the hair texture. And then hair highlights at an angle, mid-tones, so either like this, <clears throat> and then we have the tiny stringy pieces, which um, counteract the general highlight, where the highlight's coming from. That's the biggest rule for hair, that's the basic way you draw hair, even if it's super dark, even if it's um, like black hair, it's still the same, still the same, uh, still the same idea. 
hair curves at an angle and does all of, all, all those little things that I just showed you. <clears throat> and um, if you, if you break this process, if you work from small to large, if you paint the whole pa the painting with a bunch of small brush strokes, if you forget to highlight, if you forget that hair casts a shadow, if you forget that hair is randomized, I mean, you're just setting yourself up for drawing really, really bad hair. So that's what was happening in your image is it, you were just drawing hair that looked real because you had uh, re other realistic things around the, 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 the hair that reinforced some level of realism like the face but what you were doing is you were representing and rendering it to be something other than what you were aiming for. If you were aiming for oily hair um, it works, it actually looks like oily hair um, the only issue is that oily hair is still subject to highlights so still have to produce some highlights that curve with the hair structure. Just like this somehow. Alright, if you want to break it apart and fix it from where you are right now, instead of starting over, just get a larger brush stroke and mess around until you get that same texture, shrinking your brush and enlarging it back and forth. But this is not the setup process. This is not the real process. The real process is starting from large to small, from scratch. This is the correcting process. <clears throat> okay. So please, everyone, remember the actual process is something you can trust. It's not something that you can just... Um, you know, write down and forget about. That's just how hair is. Scientifically, if you think about it, we don't see every tiny little hair. What we see is a bunch of pieces together um, that combine to be one large piece. So we see a bunch of tiny little hairs that come together um, and can be represented in a brush stroke as one large brush stroke. Um, and then applying the hair and the, and, and, the, um, and the highlight and the tiny little flyaway hairs all of that eventually comes together. So that's all I can really say for you. Also, another thing you had is, you see in this example I gave you here, the reflectivity is not that high. I mean, if you, if, do you want me to make this look oily? I'll make it look oily. Make it look oily as fuck. <laughs> all I have to do is make the contrast heighten because reflective surfaces like metallic surfaces, that's how they act. So this is how you make it look oily. It's kind of lame because it's all soft and lame. But um, this is pretty much the, the, what I mean. You just heighten the contrast and it starts to look really oily. But when was that ever a good look? <clears throat> okay, so avoid that and uh, keep it low contrast. So that you, you do represent the reflectivity of the hair. There is this highlight right here. But it is not an excessive highlight. What we have, before, what we had before, is high contrast. You had really, really light lights happening. Like look where you were choosing the highlight from. And in the example I showed you, the highlight was all the way down here, and yours was up here. That's too bright, and that's too saturated. Um, find a good reference. There are many, many references of blue hair available online. We've looked at them before. Um, blue hair, winter, you'll just like, you'll just explode. This is, this is overly exposed photograph. Um, something like this right here, where you see that her, fa her hair is nowhere near as reflective as the background or any white units in the image. Over here, not much, not much contrast at all. Look at her arm, compare the contrast in her arm to her hair, even though her hair is supposed to be reflective. Um, those are the things you have to observe. Is, is, is there high contrast in your reference? If there isn't, why should there be high contrast in your reproduction? It's very, very basic thinking. Save. Alright. Um, then there's this piece by uh, Michelle Eldrup. Or Der sorry, I can't say your last name very well. I'm very, very sorry. Um, Michelle, I'm sorry. Uh, okay, um, what we're doing now is a little bit of figure drawing again. The symmetry of the chest area, even though she is at a slant, is still off because the boobs sit on the same horizontal plane. 
And unless there is foreshortening happening, unless there is a perspective tilt, unless we are on a separate plane and her breasts are tilted and run like a camera tilt, at that point, that's when the breasts will be, one will be above the other. But as long as we're on the same ground as her, the camera is pretty much head level. The rest of her body, yeah, it's in the tilt, but it's not like her boobs are, are, are leaning. So when someone leans over on a desk, your boobs don't change shape. <laughs> your boobs don't... <laughs> Imagine if this happened. If you were to lean on the table and, and your boobs would be the, what you leaned on instead of your arm. I don't know why that's funny to me. It's just funny if you think about it. I'm such a dork. Um, so what I'm trying to show you here is uh, that the breasts need to be on the same level, even if you have a tilty, um, sassy, uh, leaning um, magician lady. Okay? Another thing is the proportion and the sizes. So the lips were, the lower half of the body was too big, uh, the lower half of the face was too big, and the um, <laughs> image is still in my mind. <clears throat> and, and the upper half uh, was too small. So what you want to do is, if you want to paint a female character, the large, the upper half of the face is what should be largest, and the lower half is what should be smallest. Again, back to the cuteness thing. If you want to create cute looking girls or cute looking characters, you need to do that. Make sure the neck is not sticking out necessarily. Your neck was a bit sticking out a little. Um, collarbone needs to be tucked in. And now her position seems to be, or her pose, seems to be a bit more stabilized. Everything seems to be connected to a spine now that is controlling the symmetry in the breasts, in the chest, in the stomach, and the shoulders. So I'll show you the before and after. Um, before, after. <clears throat> Depends on how hard she's leaning. No, I mean, like, if, instead of depending on your arms to keep you up, <laughs> your boobs are, I don't know why, it's like your boobs grow out and just work like, that's weird. It's a weird, stupid image in my mind. Before, <laughs> after. Do you see, Michelle? <laughs> Ew, boob arms. Oh my god. Instead of boobs, you have hands. <laughs> So, Michelle, what you had before was you were trying, I think you drew the face and then you drew the body around it. You need to come up with a good reference that will help you uh, create more controlled anatomy. When you come up with a reference and you use it, what the reference will show you, what the reference will force you to do, everybody listen please, is symmetry. A human body is a, an, art, an artifact of symmetry. It is an artifact of... Uh, not an artifact. It is, it is an example. It is an agent of symmetry. It is the exemplary of symmetry. A human body is beautifully symmetrical. It's a divine symmetry of sorts. And um, if you follow a reference, you will not interrupt the symmetry. If you do, it will feel uncanny. It will be a perverted symmetry. Perverted not in the sense of hentai. I mean, perverted, the, 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 the Japanese word, not the English one. Hen, which means like, odd. No, that's not what I mean. Oh my god, what the fuck am I saying? Um, <laughs> I mean, perverted in the sense that it was a chain corrupted. Thank you! Why? I love you. I love you so much. Thank you so much. A corrupted symmetry. You don't want a corrupted symmetry. You want a preserved symmetry because that is what um, is inherently uh, ultimate. The, the, the best kind of function we have is the function um, reinforced by symmetry. So if your eyes are asymmetrical, if your body's asymmetrical, like severely asymmetrical, if you've got one tiny eye, if you've got one really long arm, there is a function problem. There is a function issue in your general body. It's actual, they actually have medical terms for human bodies that are not symmetrical. And the biggest thing I can tell you that you will benefit from if you use references is the preservation of the symmetry. The symmetry will remain intact. What you did not have before, it wasn't the size, it wasn't the weight difference, she looked a little bit chubbier, um, it was the symmetry, the fact that the breasts were on a different angle, and you were having a very, um, 
imbalanced uh, anatomy happening and after. Okay, um, as for the face, again, I've taught you guys a lot about how to make a cute girl face, small nose, small mouth. Yeah, it sucks that that's what is accepted, but just look at all the League of Legends splashes and you'll agree with me that that's what is commercially um, sought, sought after and um, that's what you'll be hired for. Um, as for the face in general and the contrast and the highlights, uh, you probably want to get the exact color in this light source here and use it on everything. So I, I'm just going to drop tool this color and bring it here because that's exactly what happens in real life. This is exactly what happens. Okay, I hate this brush. <clears throat> color and the intensity of the light are both adapted. Adopted, adopted, not adapt. Fuck, I'm so fucked up right now. I need to read some books. <laughs> um, they're both adopted by the object that is receiving the light. I'm literally drop tooling the highlighter here, this, this little gem. And I'm highlighting the face along The, the light spots that I teach you guys about. Yep, so a little bit over here on the collarbone, a little bit on the hair. Right over there. God damn it, I'm going to sneeze again. Okay. As for the color palette, good job matching the, 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 the wings. You didn't make them too orange or anything. They, they're still cool. But I recommend, um, I recommend uh, throwing a wash of color over them just to, make, just to push them that last little step toward the color palette because it's all analogous at this point. The colors beside each other on the color wheel. So that's what you want to sort of keep. You want to keep it nice and controlled. And in the background, you can go ahead and have a new color like a navy blue for the darks outside at night. And you can have those two um, contrasting each other. Not really contrasting, but um, complementing. Okay. You also want to make the background a little darker. So multiply. Same navy. I'm just going to get that navy again. The only light source is her little um, is her little uh, gem, so it should be a generally dark cave, like unless that's like a I don't know. I'm so sorry. I'm just I, I I'm so sick right now. <laughs> um, that's the um, you know like uh, some high watt costs like eight thousand gold in the shop. <clears throat> I'm such an asshole when I'm sick. I really am. Um, okay, so what I'm going to do is just have a little bit more contrast up here. Whoopsie, that's too much. Alright, and then take a little bit of, of that highlighter. I mean, use the dodge tool to express that highlight even further. So now her, her sort of, her, her body is a little bit more involved. with the atmosphere in the room. <laughs> okay, and uh, do you see the blues out here? What you can do is really play with this palette and bring some of those blues in to create some form on the sides as if the blue was a light source of the background. Yeah, so I'm just using the sides of the, because they're kind of getting drowned out. So what I'm doing is I'm getting the light of the background and using that to express the sides of her staff. 
any structures in the background that are getting some light on them. Reflect also. So the moon and the clouds also increase the highlight of the background, increase the value of the background. So it doesn't have to be a dark night outside. It can be something that can, in your image can be used as a tool, a secondary light source. And that can help you. Um, another interesting thing, even though it doesn't happen in this case, what you can do is uh, play around and break the rules a little bit and include some subsurface scattering for her ears. Some light going through her ears. Not there, because that part's it's part of the shadow, just at the very tips at the top. Just up here. Sorry about my sniffles, I really am. Okay, dokie. So there are a couple of changes I made. Nothing too extreme, but uh, but again, think about your image in the fact of, think about your image and what it's representing. If you're going to be representing human humanoid, then you have to think about anatomy because it's a humanoid. It's human. It's got human qualities in it. And as long as it's got a human form in it, there's a human anatomy. All you have to do is ask any, I guess you can call them laymans, <laughs> that have no idea what art is, and they'll tell you if something looks odd to them because their eyes are accustomed to the symmetrical functioning human body. So if something does not look like it can function, they will tell you, that looks weird. They won't have the appropriate vocabulary to tell you why it looks weird. They'll just tell you it looks weird. And you're going to have to figure out why on your own. Um, asking uh, an artist, of course, will do better. Uh, an artist will do better in expressing to you exactly what the issue is. And from my perspective, the issue was in the symmetry. The symmetry was a problem. There's also a size issue with the lower half of her jaw. It was not cute. Um, what you want to do is further the beauty. She's like a beautiful enchantress type of harpy lady. Um, so you want to have that level of beauty and, and all of that. You want to express that she's beautiful and can tempt men <clears throat> in um, wh wherever she's from. Th those look like uh, World of Warcraft ears. I could be wrong. <coughs> Night Elf, of course. Um, I'm not a nerd. I don't have no right to call myself a nerd if I can't even <laughs> tell the difference between a day elf and a night elf. <laughs> Belly spotted harpy, as Shakespeare would say. <laughs> I already shut up. This is a really cool image, by the way. Oh, Michelle. So good job, Michelle, with the colors. That <laughs> can be nice, too. Um, and uh, I just balanced out all the, 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 the values as well and closed off the canvas so that it can have a bit of more of a focused color palette. You had a warmish yellow-brown wing. That won't look warm yellow-brown in, in, at night. It won't, because there's not enough sunlight to bring out the warmth in her in, in the wing. The source, the light source, is a cool tone, so it'll bring out all the cool tones. And it'll reflect its color. It'll bleed over. Like, it'll stain. It'll stain colored light sources, stain the objects that they touch. What did I just write? Everybody write it back to me. I'm not repeating it. Yes. <laughs> Good job. <laughs> Drake gets a sticker, Apple gets a sticker, Pineapple gets a sticker. The rest of you can can go on without stickers. Yeah. Alright, so colored light sources stain the objects they touch. So if it's at nighttime and all you have are the blues and the general hue of the night and the blacks and the, the, the almost blue night sky, and then you've got a light source from the moon, you have got you don't have much sunlight to really have any color come out. But if you have an actually colored amethyst staff of, of truth and it has a purple tint to it, it will give off the color it, it, um, it, uh, it, it, it has. Okay. Thank you, everyone, for coming. Thank you, everyone, for watching. I'm sorry for being so sick. I'm sorry for slurring my words. I'm super, super just stupid right now. So, um, so, so that's it. Thank you, everyone, for coming. Have a great day. Bye-bye.